Well, hi guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. I want to do some milling today, but we've got a bit of an issue. Let's have a bit of a look. The thread in here is 10 millimeters in this collar jack, and we want to put it in the Morse taper here. But it needs a drawbar, really. I haven't really got a proper drawbar. At this point, I've got a piece of 5 16 threaded rod because the hole through the back of the, the spindle is only 5 16 on this machine. So what we need to do is make, I guess, what you call a pull stud to adapt this collet chuck to that bar. So that's today's job. So I found a bit of 4140. It's a bit bigger than it should be. We're going to face the end of it and turn it down probably 12 millibit down to 10 millimeters and then put a thread on it to match the, the chuck. So that's the first job. So we've got a 10 mil thread on there just for the die because uh, no thread cutting on this machine yet. That goes on there nicely. I've given that a clean up with just a sanding sponge, which seems to work best for me. It takes the, the burr and the sharp edge off and gives you a nice shiny finish. And a pretty tidy looking thread with a bit of undercut in the end. This size should go in the front of the spindle, I think. I'm going to part it off and take that chance. But I've only got, if I measure it, Make sure I've only got about 15 millimetres here of that diameter that I can actually use to screw it in. So I'm going to part that off at 15 millimetres long. Which is there. We'll part that off and test drive it and make sure it fits and I know I'll turn it round and I'll put a thread in the other end. And I might set it up and put some flats in to screw it on on the milling machine. We'll see how we go with that. Better slow this down a little bit. So next job to drill this tap and drill for 516 Whitworth or UNC, whatever. Don't want to go right through into the other three because so I'll break it off later. The problem of course is that although I've got a dozen 3.8 taps and probably four new ones and probably a dozen quarter inch taps and maybe half a dozen new ones, I've only got three very beat up 5.16 taps. There's the intermediate and the taper and probably what might serve as a plug. It looks like it's probably been reground. So, We've got a blind hole, we're going to need to use that, but we want to get in as far as we possibly can with these. I'm going to give this a fighting chance. I'm going to start off with this one. And see how we go. So we actually had to stop and wait for the milling machine because we had another job set up in here that we needed the pull stud for. So it, it's already been used uh, to set my uh, collet chuck in here and I've done a little job with it, which was to put a slot and a couple of holes in the bottom of this base for the tail stock for the, the dividing head. So we've done that, which was already set up. And we've come back and put the dividing head back on and set this back to horizontal. And we're just gonna put a couple of slots on here. There's probably pretty good camera mount there, I think. 
still utilizing the broom handle. This little shirt iron chuck is beautiful. It's really, it's one of those things that bought a lot of accessories for this mill that were gonna be way, way, way too big. But this rotary table and chuck, just fantastic for this little machine. So we need to put a couple of slots on here. And this spanner here, which is quarter and five sixteenths width width, sort of lives on this mill now because it operates this and it operates this and it operates most of the shaper as well. Um, all the gib screws, everything else works with this particular the hand crank on the back. Belt adjustment, everything works with this spanner. So the best thing is just to make it to fit this. Uh, if we set this round at zero. Yeah, like that. Measure the spanner. Work out what we've got to take off it. I reckon about 440,000, something like that. It'll be very, very good. So... We're going to need to reverse this mill because if we have a look where we were working before, that cutter's running backwards. Haven't got a switch set up yet, but I hope to put a rotary drum switch down here on the table, uh, on the front of the bench here somewhere, just so I can reverse it easily. But we're going to go into the settings. And that's nicely reversed that. So we'll just touch off. I think there might be just a fraction of small fast. Let's try that with you. Let's get the micrometer and measure this. It's 5.45, we need 4.45, 4.40. So we need 100 thou off, it's 50 thou each side. Turn this to 180. any luck the spanner should fit beautifully and it does so that's another job done we'll have a look at that the next thing I think is to polish that a bit give it a good clean up and being 4140 we might harden it up it wants to be probably about 55 rock well and that way it won't break or pull out or strip or anything else Let's see how we're going to achieve that using the, the Hotshot 360. I'll give this a good deburr up and a polish. And we'll have a look over at the oven. So back over here on the bench, and I've 
And I've rewatched the Air's Garage video on hardening 4140. It's a pretty good series of videos on heat treating that he's done a little while ago now, but go and check them out if you haven't. And there's a gap in 4140, so you, you can't really successfully harden it between 45 and 54 Rockwell. There, there's strange things happen with the metal in those, those tempering temperatures. So I'm going to go for 45 RC, which is a tempering temperature of 400 degrees Celsius. It's Celsius, not Fahrenheit. We need to harden it first, though, to about 850. We've got this nice and clean. Um, cotton bud and some some metho but we don't want it to blacken up too much so what I've got is some stainless steel foil um, this stuff hurts when you go to buy it and you don't use very much more than you need to because it is kind of a bit expensive but it's just the thing for this it keeps off, it'll keep the oxygen out a bit Be a bit careful with it when you wrap when you roll it up because you can cut yourself. We'll put it away and 0.6 millimeter stainless foil. And hopefully it'll be as nice next time we go to use it. I think there's a million ways to burn the oxygen out of this envelope before when it starts to get hot, but I'm going to use a phosphorus off some ordinary matches and the theory is hopefully that should combust in there and get rid of any any real excess ex, uh, excess ox oxygen in the envelope that's the theory but, but I've discovered that you've had to you've got to close this up pretty good and fold it over a few times to get it to the point that it actually works. And that should be a pretty good little packet. We'll put that in the oven, just over here like this. Close the door. Now, heat treat it for this is somewhere between 840 and 865 Celsius. So I'm gonna go 850, which is what we've got there. Turn the control power on, and heat on and turn it on for run is on so that should be starting to rise it says half hour for inch of thickness now this is only about less than half inch thickness so it probably needs about 20 minutes or so in there i'm going to give it half hour when it gets to heat and pull him out and we're going to quench him in oil. So we've had about 30 minutes at 850. That's pretty hot in there. Let me stick him out and we'll quench him. Flip that off. And we'll wait for the oven to cool down to 400. So we've had that on, well, we're reading 400 there for probably half hour. We should be plenty enough to get it up to temperature and soak it through. I think on a little part like this, a little bit more wouldn't hurt, but we're gonna live with that. And I'm getting impatient.
look at this out, put him on the same as see, remember he's hot. Make sure the oven's off. And we're just going to let that cool in there until it's pretty much back down to temperature we can touch, which is going to be a little while. So I'll have a look at that a bit later on. We'll come back then. So in the end, I've just dropped that in the oil from about 200 degrees, something like that, uh, just to give it a nice black finish rather than mess around. And I had some Carswell blue here that I could, like a cold blue solution I could use. But this is probably plenty good enough. And that's what we've got. So that screws in there nicely. Very similar finish to the to the rest of the tool. We can tighten that down with the spanner, no worries at all. And the 516 threads in the other end. So that all looks like it works. Pretty pleased about that. That was today's job. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Big shout out to all my new subscribers. I'm sure you're all awesome people. Look forward to getting to know you. And on to the next project. Have some more videos soon and be kind to each other.